Hey guys and welcome back to this new video. Today I will talk about your photos again. You were able to send me your best photo and I will give a bit of feedback um, to this. If you will send uh, me your photo and if you want some feedback from me, um, then just send me your photo to this email address here or click on this video because there I explain a bit more. And now I would say I don't want to talk too much, let's jump into the first photo. The first photo is from Lasse and he wrote some sentences about this photo. I will just read that out. He's writing, Hi, I'm Lasse, a young wildlife photographer from Germany. Since I started photography a half a year ago, I had the dream to see and photograph an owl. On the day my image was taken, I walked around a local forest and I just enjoyed my weekend, but then I spotted something in the tree and I directly knew what it was. A 20 owl. The next day I came back with my equipment, hoping and hoping the owl would still be there. And it was. I slowly got ready and waited for the owl to move a bit. After two hours of waiting, the owl woke up and cleaned its feathers. The perfect moment. That is how the image of my owl was taken. Thanks for listening and I hope you like it. And yeah, I have to say that I never found and photographed an owl and because of this I just love old photos and this photo is really really good especially when you're writing your young wildlife photographer um, that's a really really good photo I really like how there are like this leaves around um, the owl and it's framing the owl pretty good and you when you have the first look your view is going directly to the owl because um, there are these blurry um, leaves around the body of the owl. And I also really like the position of the owl, because normally when you have owl photos, you either see them sleeping or staring at the camera. And I like how the um, owl, as you already said, is cleaning itself. Um, and that makes the photo a bit more interesting and not that common. And it helps to, um, the photo to stand out from the many other um, photos of owls. Um, what I would do is probably in the editing I would make a little vignette um, to the owl so I would darken the um, leaves a bit so that the view is um, even more going directly to the owl and you can probably try to make the green of the leaves a bit more orange and um, warm you can find this tool under the colors tool in for example Lightroom or Luminar or um, wherever you've edited your photos and you can either make this photo a bit more warm so the the green of the leaves a bit more orange or you can try to make the photo a bit colder and this pretends that you make the photo at night and this can look pretty pretty good if you were making just the um, white balance a bit colder and probably the shadows a bit colder and then you can try to make the um, highlights a bit warmer because this looks really really good so try this out and that's a really good photo um, and something you can also try out is um, a bit of noise reduction because I can see that the uh, um, photo is quite noisy I don't know um, your exifs you um, don't um, wrote them to me but I can imagine that the ISO was a bit higher and I don't know if you have a software like um, Topaz Photo AI or Topaz Denoise and you can either use this or if you're editing for example in Lightroom you can also use the internal Lightroom Denoise um, software because this is really really good since the update with the AI. So try this out and then I think this photo looks even better. The next photo we're looking at is a photo from Mariam and she's writing I have had a feeding station on my balcony since November 2022 and tits and other birds come here regularly. At that time I didn't have camouflage netting and so I photographed through the window pane. On a, cl on a cloudy day there was a lot of activity so I sat quietly in front of the window and waited. After a very short time a grey tit came and posed in front of me which then resulted in this picture. At first, again, that's a really, really nice photo. I really like how the um, tit is looking and how the tit is especially placed. Because 
We all know the classic um, portrait shots of birds and I'm doing them myself, so <laughs> don't take me as an example. Um, but I really like that the tit is a bit more in the right of the picture and there's some more space um, in the left. And you choose a really, really nice um, perch. Because it's not like a boring um, branch or stick or something, it's this um, tree stump and the little green moss in the foreground um, looks pretty pretty good and it makes the photo way more interesting. And I also like the background because it's really nice blurry and you can see some bokeh balls in the, um, in the top of the photo. I um, think they are there um, because of um, some trees and the sky. Um, what you can try is to brighten the background a bit up um, because it's a bit dark this photo in my opinion um, and I think you can make this photo like a bit more looking better when you brighten the background a bit up and what you can also try is to mask out the um, bird so the tit and at first I would um, give the yellow in the feathers a bit more saturation because that looks a bit unsaturated and also I would probably um, give it give the bird a bit more contrast so that it pops out a bit more um, but all in all that's a great photo again and it's really hard for me to give you some tips because you're making it not e um, easy because your photos are already quite really really good and something I would like to say about this um, photo, or not really about this photo, um, a bit more about the equipment um, she used, is that she's shooting with Olympus. And this is probably um, not the most common camera um, brand. And I really like to see that it's, or of course that's obvious, but sometimes you forget this a bit, um, that you can also shoot or that you, you don't need always Canon, Nikon or Sony to take um, nice wildlife shots. You can also do this with other um, yeah, camera brands like Olympus or um, Fujifilm or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting to see and I really like this. By the way, um, all Instagram channels are linked in the description below. Um, because some of you sent me also their Instagram channels and I think if you look at a photo now and you say oh that's a really nice and interesting photo I would like to see more photos of this photographer then make sure to check it um, out in the description below. The next photo is from um, Josh and he's writing I took this photo a few months ago. At that time I had a DSLR camera for about a month and I took a lot of photos with it. The crocus was the first to grow in the garden and as it was a very sunny day I took the opportunity to take some photos. This picture was and still is one of the best I have taken. However, it is not quite perfect. For example, there is a bit of depth missing in the picture. I took the picture unfortunately in JPEG and after editing it on the mobile phone, I also deleted the original because I thought I wouldn't need this anymore. You're photographing since a month, so not a lot, not for a long time. And if you imagine that you're photographing only for one month, this is an amazing photo, especially I really like how you placed the crocus because um, like every beginner or not every beginner, I, but I did this myself, um, when you're photographing the first time you're trying to get as close as you can to the um, subject and you place it right in the middle and this makes your photos quite look a bit boring. And you did this quite really really well because you um, placed the little flower a bit in the right. Um, you have also this this um, some grass in the um, foreground, in the sharp foreground and then this nice looking background because there are some really really nice bokeh balls. Um, you said that you were um, taking this photo at a sunny day and the problem is that if you're photographing in the midday sun or in general when it's sunny and it's midday and I think you took this at this time of the day um, you have really really harsh light um, and the problem is that you have then some really dark places in the um, photo as you can see for example in the background and also some really really um, bright um, 
areas in the photo as you can see it for example in the um, flower and to yeah, fix that problem you can just go out in the morning or in the evening when the light is a bit smoother and not that harsh. Um, then you also wrote that you were editing this photo on the smartphone and I think that's quite absolutely okay for the, um, for the beginning. But what um, I can say is that you just have not that many opportunities um, when you're editing on your smartphone, especially when it comes to um, masking, um, you're a bit limited. And when we're talking about editing, in my opinion, um, this photo has a bit too much contrast. Um, especially the background looks really, really dark and high contrasted. And you can just try to bright the background a bit up. And that way this photo looks already really, really better when you're doing this. Unfortunately, you said that you deleted the... Um, the original file but you also wrote that um, you will don't make this mistake again so yeah that's something I would never do um, delete the originals um, because you always need them again at some day even if it's in like 10 years um, so yeah never do this um, but try to yeah to follow these tips especially this editing tips and also um, try to go out the next time in the morning or in the evening and I think this um, will help you to improve your photos quite a lot. The next photo is from Dave and he's just writing that the bird is an egret and that the photo is a um, crop from, from the original um, image. So he's not writing that much but that's totally okay. And yeah, what should I say? This is a stunning photo. I really really like the um, at first the crop because you have a really clean looking portrait of the, um, of the bird, of the egret, and that looks just stunning and it's totally sharp, so um, the autofocus is right on point on the eye and it looks just amazing. And it's, you make it quite really hard for me to um, give you tips to improve your photos. One thing I um, would probably try is to brighten up the background again. You can either do this with a um, background mask in Lightroom or wherever you edit your photos and just um, push a bit the um, whites and also the blacks and you can also try to give it a bit um, of negative texture because that makes the background a bit more um, quiet and a bit more smooth. Um, or you can just try to push the shadows and the blacks in general of the photo, but this way um, it can also um, affect the bird. So I really, really like this photo. I cannot really say um, much <laughs> to this. Of course, you wrote that you were using a um, Canon EOS R3 and a 500mm lens f4. So that's a, quite a really professional setup. Um, but in the next photo we are looking now, um, we can see that you don't need um, the best and most expensive equipment um, to take good photos. Because the next photo from Dante, I hope I pronounce your um, um, name right, is a photo um, from a female hawk and he made this photo in a photo blind in Belgium. And wow, this was a really, really nice situation you captured. Because I really like how this um, hawk is eating its um, prey. I think it's a pigeon um, who um, it's eating. And you wrote that you took this photo with a Canon EOS 500D. Yes, a Canon 500D. And that's a camera you get quite cheap um, when you buy it um, second hand. And the photo is really amazing. So, of course, you use the um, Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, and even this is not the um, best. And or okay, it's quite really good for the price you're paying, but it's not the um, most expensive lens if you compare it, for example, with a Canon um, RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens or even a um, 600 millimeter um, lens from Canon or Sigma or whatever. 
Um, and I made a video about the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens already. So if you're interested in this lens, make sure to check it out. Um, I will link it up here because this is a crazy lens for the um, price um, you're paying. Um, but this photo shows perfectly how um, it not depends on your equipment, what kind of photos you're taking, because it looks super, super nice and you just had the perfect um, conditions and the perfect subject and the light was really, really good. I guess you um, took this at sunset or sunrise because the um, light is really, really smooth, not harsh and really warm. One thing I would probably uh, make a bit different is that you you can even zoom out a bit. You wrote that you took the photo on 600 millimeters and if you had zoomed out a bit, probably to 500 millimeters or something, and then turned the camera a bit more left, that there's a bit more st um, space uh, in the direction the hawk is looking, and that would give the subject, so in this case the hawk, a bit more space, and it's not that close um, to, the, to the edges of the photo. Um, so try this probably out the next time. Um, something you can try in the editing now is again, masking the background and um, brighten up especially here the um, shadows because I really like the background in the um, on the right side of the photo but on the left side and um, it's a bit dark I think um, or it looks like there was a tree um, and that makes that the focus is not going directly to the um, to the head of the of the hawk um, it's more going to the um, general body and if you um, darken the, the background a bit, uh, no, not darken, if you bright the background a bit up, especially on this um, areas where it's too dark, and if you're then trying to um, yeah, make a little mask on the head of the bird and bright this just slightly a bit up, that can look way better. But all in all, a great shot, um, good job. And yeah, guys, that was it already again. Um, we had some really, really nice photos again in this episode and I'm really fascinated um, about your photos and about your talent. So that makes me really happy um, to see all your talents. Um, I have about five or six more photos you sent me already. And if your photo was not in this episode, I'm so sorry, um, but it will definitely be in the next episode. So um, stay tuned. Um, if you want to s uh, send me your photo again, feel free to do so. I'm glad to see that you um, like to yeah, have a look at this format and you like to watch um, the photos from our community and that's something really really nice. So feel free to send um, me your photos. If you want to see the last episode because there were some great photos um, for example of the Kingfisher um, make sure to check out this video here and then I would just say we see us next Saturday. Have a great week. See you out there. Bye.